Exodus 12, 1 through 4 and 11 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as perpetual of ordinance. Jesus and his disciples were gathered here in this upper room. But this Passover was different. There was tension in the air. You see, Jesus, in his three years of ministry, he had made many enemies. He lived a life showing grace and mercy telling others that he is bringing in the kingdom of God here and now to free the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to give sight to the blind. Not everyone was pleased with what Jesus had been doing in ministry. Some were jealous because he had all of these crowds that were following him. They saw it when he came in on the donkey into Jerusalem and the crowds laid their palms and their cloaks down. Yes, some were jealous, political and religious leaders, that he had so many people following him. Some people thought he was blasphemous, that he in no way, shape, or form emulated the God that they worshiped. But I believe most of all, many people were upset because Jesus had exposed corruption. He spoke truth to power. And so as he sat in that upper room, sharing the Passover meal with his disciples, as generations had done before him, he knew that he would not leave Jerusalem alive. And yet, he remained at the table. The disciples were gathered there, some in confusion of what was going on, some were scared, and in the midst of that, Jesus took a bowl. It was a bowl of water. He took off his outer robe. And then he began to bathe their feet. It was such a simple act. It was a humble service extended to the ones that he loved. Maybe as he knelt before each one, gently removing the dirt from the long journey that they had had. Maybe he offered a word of comfort or encouragement maybe, or hope to sustain them because he knew there was a more arduous journey ahead. Like us, the disciples were ordinary people living ordinary lives. They were ordinary people, but living in an extraordinary time with Jesus. And as they gathered in that upper room, they knew something was going to happen. Perhaps they sensed that their lives were, were changing in ways that they could only guess. As we had said, some were anxious and some were angry at, at Jesus and others. Some were at peace. Some may have not known at all what was about to happen. Jesus fed them all. 
He sat at the table with every one of them, even the one he knew would run away, even the one he knew would betray him, even the ones who would fall asleep. The love of Jesus bridged every barrier. And so it is for us. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And although we are not physically present with one another on this night, we are united with Jesus in this holy meal, with all who have ever shared it, and with all the, those who come after us. And so, friends, just as Jesus did not hesitate to share the cup with Judas, who he knew would betray him, Jesus invites all of us, all of us, no matter our pain, no matter our grief, no matter our despair, no matter what our failures are or our faults, no matter what our own betrayals have been, Jesus says, come, come and eat with me. This grace can transform you. Come, there is room at my table for you. There is room at my table for all. There is room at my table, says Jesus. And so this night you are invited, just like in that last supper, to share in the food that nourishes the spirit as we make our ways on the journeys. We remember his words that echoed that night his disciples and that have echoed through the ages. I am always with you. I invite you to join me in our Holy Communion liturgy. The words uh, that you are to say responsibly are written on the bottom of your screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, even in the heaviness of sorrow and fear. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the midst of the events of the last week, the disciples had really floundered. It started out fine, with excitement, really, as they had entered Jerusalem with the crowds following, laying their palms and their cloaks on the ground. They were singing, and they were shouting. Would you shout with me? Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And then that moment had come. The moment when Jesus says the words. On the night that he gave himself up, the night that he was betrayed, he gave himself for the message of peace, of justice, and of love. The night he gave himself up for us. He took the bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And for the first time, the next words that he spoke sent a chill down their spine. For he said, Do this in remembrance of me. 
When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this cup, all of you, all of you. This cup is the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Oh God, we pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here tonight, both near and far, no matter which table we find ourselves sitting. You are there, just as you did with our ancient ancestors in the faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, so that may be for the suffering world the body of Christ will be liberated by his witness, his passion and resurrection. Let us die to the ways of injustice so we may live again in your promise. Let us be inspired to proclaim hope, peace, love, and justice in your name. Amen. And so now, we are one in the Spirit. The presence of Christ that was real to the disciples is real to us in this moment. And so I invite you now to take your bread. This bread, this bread is the body of Christ. It is the bread of life, and it is given for you. Take and eat. This cup is the new covenant. The cup of salvation, and it is poured for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the gifts of the bread and of the wine. We thank you for this holy meal, for your presence, for your love, for your sacrifice. And so may it nourish us on the journey ahead, that we may minister in your name, so that others here and around the world may know love and justice and peace. Amen. Heal the sick 
in remembrance of me feed the poor in remembrance of me open the door and let your truth in remembrance of me always love in remembrance of me don't look above but in your heart Look in your heart for God. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the others, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples.